Good fences, good neighbors. Mr. Chairman, members of the Good Citizenship Committee, this motto is the keynote of my address to you today. Applause. It has always been my theory that a man should mind his own business. If each man keeps his fences mended, he won't have to worry about the neighbor's chickens in his yard. Now, you may think that that's just a plug for my fences. Wait for the laughter. But no, my friends, I'm merely pointing out the truth and honesty of that simple statement. I do sell fences. I sell other honest implements, the plowshare, the corn husker, the harrow, and the cultivator, uh, and so forth and so on. So I know the rest of it. It's been my theory that the... A man should mind his own business. It's, ladies and gentlemen, members of the club, it has been my theory that a man should... that a man should mind his own business. And not... Hey, Dad! Oh, oh, darling. Carol, I'm glad you dropped in because I may not be here this afternoon. There's a prospect in the... Uh-huh. There's a prospect you'll be playing golf. Well, I thought if I was near the country club, I uh -huh. might. You won't be able to go over the course. There's seating the greens. And even the clubhouse isn't open. Well, but darling, that's the way I like it. Uncrowded. And you know, it's the early worm that catches the birdie. Oh, Dad, one more like that. With Mark begging me to name the day, you'll be without a secretary and a daughter. Oh, say, while I've got the secretary, will you type over these notes for the, the Wednesday talk? Well, what for? We both know them by heart. I know, but I've got a new opening there uh, about the motto. You better take all of them. You'll lose those on the first hole. I'll make you bet I bring every ball back that I take or I'll buy you a new hat. I just charge one to you. Darling, I've got a good mind to stop by that bank and tell Mark how extravagant you are. Here, <laughs> goodbye, dear. Have a good time. Maybe they'll never believe us. Oh, oh. Wait a minute, you little... Hole in one. F.J. March 18th. Mm. Oh, <laughs> you baby. <laughs> oh. Well, we've just about got time for one more, baby. Oh, I don't ask for another hole in one, but how about a birdie, huh? Oh, right in the woods.
On the couch. A minute ago, you were sure you lost him. Tony, I swear I didn't. Come on. What's that? Nothing. It was something. It's a golf ball. Somebody's here. That ball has been here for months. Why, he was here today. Look at this date. It's initial. Hole in one. F.J. I tell you, he's here now. Somebody will hear you. Come out of there. Tony, no. Come out or I'll blast you out. Tony, let's get out of here. I'm not taking any chances. Tony, that may be the cause. Listen, F.J., whoever you are, if you're smart, you'll forget you were here. And don't go to the cops. Tony, please. And just to make sure I'm going to find out who you are, F.J., I'll be watching you, where you go and who you talk to. And if you've got a family, I'll be watching them, too. Every day and every hour. Tony, they're coming. Get that, F.J. You'll be hearing from me, F.J. Okay. Pickles and Dimes, I want to make a phone call. Macy, 8211. Hello? Hello, Dad. And I, I just want to let you know I, I'm on my way home, dear. Are you all right? It's awfully late. Well, of course I am. What's that? I said, did you have a good game? What? Yeah, a hole in one. Well, I'll, I'll hurry home, dear. Goodbye. Oh, uh, give me the police department. I'm talking as loud as I can. I'm... Just a minute, please. Oh. Thank you very much. Now it's your turn next, Mike. Whoa, whoa. Police department? No, I want...
What's yours? Pardon me? Oh, uh, just some coffee, please. Here's your coffee. Uh, oh, I think What's you... the matter with you? Got the shakes? I'm awfully sorry. Hey, Mac. <laughs> what are you trying to do? Get yourself killed? I, I beg your pardon? Oh, I was just admiring the young lady's anklet. That's all. Well, that ain't exactly healthy. What's Why? the matter, Eddie? This old goat's trying to get interested. Well, a fresh thing. Oh, I assure you, madam, that I hadn't... I, I had no... Here. Just keep the change, please. Well, thanks. What a character. Hello, Daddy. Hello, Jenny, baby. Daddy, we've kept dinner waiting, and I'm perfectly hideous. Hurry. Yeah, well, I'm Go sorry ahead. to be late, dear. I'll help you. I have such an important engagement. Hello, uh, champ. Hello, darling. Were you kidding about that hole in one? No, I made it. Oh, great. Hey, and what about my new hat? Hey, you get a new hat, too. There I you are. lost a ball. Uh oh Well, we'll have to have that lucky ball mounted and hang it over the mantelpiece. That's the one I lost. Oh, for Pete's sake. Oh, let's see, please. Yes, darling. All right, let's see. Lemon meringue? No, I think I'll pass up the dessert to well, you. I mean the thing. <laughs> You're catching cold, that's what. Staying out so late and getting overheated and chilled. Do you mind if I take my dessert up to my room? I can eat it while I get my purse and stuff. All right, Tilly. And keep out of my clothes closet. When Mrs. Johnson was alive, this family used to sit down proper and eat proper and get some good out of their food. Baby, baby, now you really are in a rush, aren't you? Well, Daddy, Lester Binky is the mental type. So when a man's taking you to a lecture, you can't keep him waiting. I wish Lester's mental activities were a little less on the morbid side. Seems to me the only thing you two ever talk about is crime. The psychology of crime, Carol. Do you know that more cream's passionel... Cream what? Cream's passionel. French for love murders. Oh, French for... Most of them are committed by middle-aged men, and those are all, uh... Jenny, I thought you said you were in a hurry. I am. Uh, Daddy. Um, uh, please, would you mind not talking golf to Lester? He simply isn't the type. He'd think it was silly and bourgeois to get all steamed up over a hole in one. All right, darling, I won't. Never mind, Dad. You can brag about it to Mark all you want to. My boyfriend isn't as mental as Mr. Binky. Thank heavens. Oh, Mark. Anything would be exciting after standing in a bank all day. Oh, there's Lester. Dilly, would you get that, please? Yes, Miss Kettle. Mark may not be glamorous, but he's honest and sweet. And 20 years from now, he'll be exactly the same. Just like someone else I could name who isn't a mile away. <laughs> Thank you, darling. She'll be right down as soon as she gets herself prettied up. Come on in, Lester, and have a piece of pie. Good evening, Carol, Mr. Johnson. Hello, Lester. As a rule, I avoid eating heavy desserts before a lecture. They slow down the perceptions and, uh... Oh, lemon meringue. Uh, well, just a small piece. We're going to a lecture on psychopathic criminology. Psychopathic criminology? I've made quite a study of the subject. I expect to do a thesis on it someday and send free copies to the criminal departments of the United States. I have a theory, some of the best minds to the contrary notwithstanding, that only psychopathic criminals return to the scene of the crime. Hello, Lester. Hi, Ginny. You're a little late. Ginny? What's that thing in your ankle? Oh, it's the latest thing, Dad. A Cleopatra slave bracelet shaped like a snake. You mean lots of girls wear them? Oh, of course. Oh, come on, Lester. We're going to be late. Good night, Carol. Good night, Daddy. Good night, Carol. Good night. Good night, Mr. Johnson. Good night, Daddy. Well, they all wear them. What's funny? Oh, nothing. For a moment, I thought everything was all right. <laughs> that settles it. We're going right upstairs to bed. Come oh, on. honey, there's nothing the matter no with argument. me. I'm... You knew you didn't hide the plates here. You lost them out there. 
He knew it all the time. You were lying to get away from there. So what? You think I wanted to get caught there? I always knew your dames would jinx us. The smart guy. Shut up. Why don't you have some other plates made? Well, you see, Edna, what you don't know is that in that little package of steel engravings is something which may make you a little more careful in the future. If you have a future. I don't get you. Well, Tony and I picked up those plates yesterday and found the drunken fool who runs the print shop had wrapped them in a piece of paper with a name and address on the inside. Then why didn't you change it? Because I didn't know they were going to have a woman's loving care. Then why are we sitting here? Why don't we clear out? Oh, I don't think the other boys would like that. No, they wouldn't like that at all. You see, Edna, Tony had a nice, clean little business all set up. All the boys were for him, and what he said goes. But when he comes to mixing up business and murder... Knock off! Oh, I'm not saying the young lady didn't deserve it. But before Tony takes a vacation, he better get a hold of them plates. Otherwise, like I said, the boys wouldn't like it. Well, I'm not taking a part. I've got to find out who F.J. is. And quick, before he goes to the cops. He hasn't already. F.J. hasn't gone to the police yet. If he had, they'd have found the body and it would have been on the radio. We heard the midnight news. Maybe you're right. For a change. And I have thrown a scare into him. And I know how to keep him scared. Well, what a fine way to spend Saturday. And I was going to play tennis. Well, why don't you? The storm seems to be over. I can't. Les should be simply furious because I'd have to play with Kenny because Lester's such a drip with a racket. What has that got to do with it? You simply don't understand men. Hi, family. Oh, hello, darling. Sun's coming out. Yeah. Mm, how do you feel, darling? Oh, I'm much better, much better. Good. Anything happened down in the office? No, but plenty happened at your golf course. Papa's hole in one? Uh-uh. Murder. <laughs> oh. oh Unidentified beauty murder victim. Storm uncovers bullet-ridden body. Highway maintenance workers checking Storm Dabby discovered the body of a beautiful girl under the bridge which crosses the Mayberry Road along the golf course. Wow. She was practically riddled with bullets, it says. Gosh, won't Lester just adore this case? And Daddy was playing there yesterday. Golly, aren't you just thrilled to death? Almost like having a murder in the family. All of those club members are middle-aged men. Jimmy. The body under the bridge, young and beautiful. Cream passionel, that's what it is. Jimmy. Where are you going? I'm going to go call Lester. You'll want to come right over and interview you. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Virginia. Uh, yes, Daddy? You're not to call Lester. Why not? Never mind why not. I don't mean that. I, I don't want Lester interviewing me. I, I don't want anybody interviewing me. I've got a headache. Well, all right, but Lester will be terribly disappointed. Just forget about my playing golf yesterday, will you? Don't mention it to Lester or anybody else. And that goes for Mark, too. Mark, too. Why, Dad. Whether I played golf or not yesterday can't bring that poor girl back to life, can it? Of course not. Well, but... all right. Now, I, I don't feel well. Will you please stop heckling me, everybody? We don't have to snap our heads off. Good gracious, anyone would think that... That's Mark. Jenny, come here, will you, baby? Darling, I'm, I'm sorry that I growled at you like an old bear. Will you forgive me? I'll think about it. Yeah. Oh, hello, Mark. Hello, Mr. Johnson. Hi, Mark. Hello, Jenny. Sorry you're under the weather. Oh, it's just a little cold. Uh, will you uh, sit down? Maybe Carol get us a drink. Oh, I don't think we'll have time for that. Not if we're going to see more than one lot. That's right. I wanted to show Carol that new track near the golf club. Maitland, the vice president of the bank, is going to build there. But if they're going to use that section for murder... Yes, yes, we know all about that, Mark. Come on, Mark, before it starts to rain again. Maybe I can get that drink when we get back. Yes, yes, all right, Mark. <whistles> Baby, what in the world are you doing? 
It's Lester. He has wonderful powers of observation. What? Well, after we went out last night, he told me everything that was on the buffet in the dining room and on the mantel here. Rat him off just like that. He's absolutely terrific because I wrote him down. He was right. Only I've got him on your watch chain. I'm not sure that I want Lester on my watch chain, darling. Daddy, please, this is metal. As I was saying, he named all the charms in your watch chain except for your elf's tooth. Oh. Well, he was right. Your elf's tooth's gone. What? Oh, Daddy, and Mother gave it to you. Oh, that's too bad. I, I had it just stay in the office, I know, because I remember that, that link being loose. Well... I probably dropped it there in the office. Or maybe the scene of the crime. What kind of a thing was that to say? I was only kidding. Well, it wasn't funny. Besides, I never played near the culvert. And once and for all, will you forget about that murder? I have. Why can't you? Honestly, anyone would think that you were the murderer. <laughs> What are you doing, Lester? Well, right along here is the logical spot for the overt act. You wouldn't notice it from the road, and it's in line with the place where they said the body was dragged down. Gosh, Lester. None of these things may be of value, but I maintain the most hardened criminal is nervous when committing a crime. And when nervous, one drops things. Gosh. What did you find? Nothing. Hey, you kids. Hey, Jenny, wait. What goes on here? I don't know. I thought I told you kids to beat it. I was only trying to help. I dug up some stuff that might be direct evidence. Here's an old pipe stem, a coin, and a discharge button. Well, that's quite an exhibit. You better take it down to headquarters. Right away? Yeah, but don't speed. Uh, don't you want my name and address? How do you know I'm not a criminal, finding evidence so I can destroy it? How do you all know... All right, all right, Jesse James. Your name and address, and the name and address of the gun marler just took it on the lamb. Lester Binky. Spell it. Uh, B-I-N-K-E-Y. Hello, caretaker. Yes, sir. I'm from the district attorney's office. I've already told the cops that I don't know nothing. Never mind that. Who played here Friday? Well, there were two or three in the morning and one in the afternoon. Who were they? I don't know, mister. I've only been here a little while. Then let me see the membership list. Oh, the other police already looked at that. Well, we want to check it again. Hurry and get it. All right. He's getting a membership list. I wish he'd hurry. I'm getting jittery. You were born jittery. I can't help it. I didn't expect to get into a murder. Shut up. And just remember, you are in it. Here you are, sir. Farley Jennings, Frank Jordan, Fred Johnson, Freeman Jolly. I'll just take this along. You've got another one, haven't you? Yes, There's a bus goes by here to town, isn't there? Who are you? Virginia Johnson. Virginia Johnson? Not, uh, not Fred Johnson's little girl, by any chance? Yes. Oh, what do you know? F.J.'s daughter. Never mind the bus, honey. I'll take you wherever you want to go. Oh, thank Thanks. you. Thank you. Here we are. Thanks a lot. Would you like to come in and stay with Dad? Oh, I won't have time now. I'll call him later. I suppose his phone is listed under the firm name? No, just Fred Johnson, Agricultural Implements. Well, thanks, Emil. I'll be seeing you. All right. Let's go. What if he sees us and recognizes us? I hope he does. Then he'll know I'm tailing him and that I've got a line on his family. Hello, Jenny. Hi. Do you feel better, Daddy? Oh, I'm all well, darling. Well, what's the matter with you? Why, nothing. Well, you look like a scared little rabbit. How silly. Daddy, I love you so much, but... 
Well, leave her alone, Dad. All right. Jenny, please sit down, dear. Honey, is anything wrong? No, no, Carol. Who are those people who brought you home? Just some people I know. Well, why didn't Lester bring you home? You were with him, weren't you? I didn't want him to. What are you hiding in your handkerchief? Nothing. Okay, honey. Carol? Mm hmm Carol, do you think that if you believe someone is good, really good, if you believe it deep down in your heart, do you think you could be wrong? Absolutely fooled? Or maybe they are good, but something has happened to them. Something which is too strong for them to fight. Maybe. Could you tell me in words of one syllable what you're getting at? Has Lester... Oh, heavens no. It's nothing really, Skiffet. Well, I know who the guy is. You don't say. Fred Johnson, agricultural implements. All the other FJs, check out of the picture. Nice going. Take a look at this. Golf club murder victim identified. Go on. Body of the murder victim discovered near the golf club yesterday was identified early this morning as that of Billy Benson, line dancer at the 37 Club. Identification was made by Tina Love, another dancer with whom the dead girl had become friendly. Go on. I know she was in trouble, declared Miss Love. I found her putting on her makeup and washing it right off again. She was crying so hard. She said, what do they do to a guy for, for counterfeiting? The boys will be interested in that last part. They'll figure it's bad to have those plates go floating around with the print shop address on the inside. Tony, I'm scared. Let me go away, please. Please, Tony, I won't get you into trouble. I swear I won't. I didn't know anybody would get killed. I never even knew about Billy. Please, Tony, let me go away. Listen, Lefty, they found the body by accident. That proves that Johnson hasn't been to the cops. He's scared. And we got to keep him that way until we find out if he has got those plates. we got to keep reminding F.J. that we know all about him. We'll send him a little present. We'll call him up. And we'll get those plates. As for you, baby, forget this itch to travel and keep your trap shut. Don't worry, Lefty. I'm not worried, Tony. Come on, Dad. Yes, darling, I'll be with you in just a moment. Thank you, darling. Will you park it, darling? I want to drop into the drugstore. Yes, Dad. Cruise around, but keep me in sight. Check. You got a kid named Virginia? Hello, Mr. Johnson. Oh, oh hello, Ed. Hi. How are you feeling? I'm fine, thank you. Good. And both your daughters? Oh, they're very well, thanks. Mailing something? Well, as a matter of fact, I, this pickup is a little late for me. Oh, well, take care of yourself. Yes, thank you, Ed.
He's got the plates. He was going to mail them, but I stopped that. I'd have had them if that cop hadn't come along. He got panicky and stuck them in his pocket and beat it. And now he gives them to the cops. No, I don't think so. He knows I got a finger on the kid. Carol, I just happened to think I didn't see Ginny before she left for school this morning. Was she all right? I guess so. Why? Oh, I was just asking. Ginny isn't all right. Something's happened to upset her. And, Dad, you're not yourself. We're not the same family. Well, I, I know what you mean, darling. It's my fault. I've, I've been irritable and... But don't you worry about our family. Well, Dad, this is for you, Mark, personal. Thank you. on the Wilson account. Oh, thank you. Virginia, I'm Inspector Monk, and this is Lieutenant Braden. We just brought you in here to ask you a few questions, and there's nothing in the world to be afraid of. Yes, sir. Virginia, we'd like to know why you ran away from Lester yesterday. I didn't mean to drag you into anything, Jenny. Let Virginia answer, please. Well, I, I saw the policeman coming, and I didn't want him to ask me any questions. Well, why? You didn't have anything to hide, did you? Well, no, but it was just... Well, I was afraid my father would find out, and he'd be angry. Well, why should he be angry? He'd think that I didn't have any business to be out there. That's right, Virginia. I can see your point. Now, if you'll just tell us what you found out there, we won't keep you from school any longer. J just an old elk's tooth. I haven't got it. Was it your father's, Virginia? Heavens, what makes you ask that? Well, he was playing golf in the last few days, wasn't he? The golf club isn't even open yet. That's right. I forgot. Well, you've been good kids, both of you. Now, there's a car waiting to take you back to school. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Well, Inspector, what do you think? Let's follow this up. Yes, this is Lieutenant Braden and Inspector Monk of the police department. Well, how do you do, Lieutenant? How do you do? Inspector, how do you would do? you sit down, gentlemen? Carol, will you get some chairs for no, the No, thanks. We're just staying a minute. Sit down, Mr. Jones. It's about your daughter, Virginia. What's happened to Virginia? Now, take it easy. Nothing. She's all right. She's back at school. Back at school? Well, I don't understand. Now, here's what happened. Virginia and a lad named... Uh... Lester Pinky. Oh, thank you. Picked up some lost objects on the golf course and turned them over to us. Good little citizens. Of course, the stuff they found probably was left there by the first dub that went over the course. But we appreciated their cooperation anyway. Oh, well, I'm very glad that she was some help to you, and I thank you for coming in. Won't you gentlemen have a cigar? Hello. Yeah. What's that? Oh, thanks. Who is this? Excuse me, I'm so used to picking up the telephone. Somebody thought I was you, said something about congratulations. Seems you made a hole in one. Who was it? They didn't say. Oh, well, they, they joshed me a lot at the club. You know, I, I really haven't broken a hundred yet. <laughs> uh, Carol, darling, don't you think you ought to get those letters out? Yes, Dad. No, will, will you have a cigar, gentlemen? No, no, no thanks. thanks. So you're getting ready for the new season, huh? Well, there's nothing like getting in a little practice ahead of time, either, is there? Oh, that's right. That's what I was doing the other day, you know, getting in a little practice. We were wondering about that. You see, the caretaker at your club said that four members were out knocking the ball around on Friday. 
Oh, there are that many. Three of them came to us voluntarily. Oh, well, I would... I just didn't think the police would be interested in my playing a little golf. From some points on the course, a man might have seen something that could help us. Well, I don't care where he was on the course. He couldn't see under those tracks. What made you think of the railroad tracks? The body was found under the bridge on the road. Oh, well, um, that was Virginia's boyfriend, that little Lester Binky, you know. Uh, I guess he gave me the idea because, you see, he's got a theory uh, that, the, that the body was, was hidden in that water course under the tracks and that the, the storm water washed it down. Well, what do you know? Kid's all right. That's our theory, too. Oh. You see, uh, we found Billy Benson's shoe in the culprit under the tracks. You did? Well, we'd better be on our way, Inspector. Thanks a lot, Mr. Johnson. Goodbye, Mr. Not at all, gentlemen. Goodbye. Thank you, Miss Johnson. Seems to me the kid Lester had a different theory about how the body got under the bridge when he talked to us. Yes, he did. Let's have Sellers tail Johnson, and he can watch that daughter of his, too. Right. Dad, you must be in some kind of trouble. Those men were here for a reason. You heard them. They found out from Ginny that I played golf on Friday, and they came to check on it. That's all. Isn't this the ball you lost? Who sent it back to you? I don't know. Was it the man who called up? I don't know, and I won't be cross-examined about it by my own daughter. I'm sorry, Caroline. Someday I'll explain the thing to you, and then you'll understand everything. I hope so. You're having lunch with Mark, I suppose. Yes, but I'm too nervous to eat. Well, I'm just going to get downstairs for sandwich, so you go whenever you want it. What about the label on the inside of the package she threw away? It was in pretty bad shape, but the lab thinks they can fix it. Now, this Johnson's got me winging. You know, murder, I figure, is almost anybody's crime, given the right conditions, but uh, counterfeiting is big league stuff. Well, Johnson has agricultural implements. Now, still, he did have the plates in his possession. If he didn't kill the woman, he knows more than he's telling. You know, we've got enough to book him right now. I'd like to hold off for a while, at least until we get a laboratory report. Yes, sir. Nice porch climbing bunker. You take that office. Still got a feeling he carries them on. I left the. I sit next to him at the fountain downstairs, don't I? If I say they ain't on him, they ain't on him. Tony can use this again. Hello, 
operator, connect me with the police department, please. Yes. Oh, it's a mistake. I'm very sorry. chance to go to the market today until he's cleaning. You don't mind eating out tonight, do you? No, of course not, dear. I'll tell you what let's do. Let's all go out and have some fun. I'll take you and Ginny to dinner at Carter's. Well, I'm going to Mark's fraternity dinner, and Ginny and Lester are going to their school dance. Oh, well, all right. I know. Why don't you take Ginny and Lester to dinner before they go to the dance? Yeah, yeah I may do that. You know, last time we were at Carter's, your mother was with us. Nothing much in the mail. Just this. Thank you, Norman. this for our police department. They're ready to listen to a younger man. Master, can't you forget about this murder? Ginny has an escapist complex. That's why she escaped last Sunday with the elk's tooth. Ginny, did you find an elk's tooth? Oh, it was nothing. There must be a million elks that belong to the golf club. But you didn't... Anyway, the police aren't interested in elk's teeth. They're interested in how the body got there. I told them that the murderer must have hid the body under the bridge. Then the stormwaters came and swept it up towards the culvert. Toward the culvert? Is that what you told them? That's it. Oh, my gosh. I just realized it. From the position the body was in, the water, it would have to run uphill to do that. I better call them and tell them. Lester, sit right where you are. Why don't you let the police alone? Lester, Daddy doesn't want to talk about the murder. Come on, it will be late. Now, uh, wait just a minute. I'm going to see you kiss the dance. Oh, but, Daddy, don't be a drip. Lester's been working on his car for two weeks. All the kids are driving together. Sure. Well, I, I guess that's all right, then. But you will be home early. 11.30. All right, and you'll drive straight home from the dance. Of course, it's only two blocks from the house. All right, well, I'll be waiting for you. Come on, children, have a good time. Thanks for the swell dinner, Mr. Johnson. Yes, that's all right. Lester, I'll catch up with you. Daddy. Yes, dear. Daddy, are you involved with a femme fatale? Certainly not. I hope not. Well, well I... Why? Oh, uh, your check, sir. Yes, I'm sorry. Oh, I beg your pardon. Oh, that's all right. I was trying to remember where I parked my car. thought so before, but now I'm sure of it. And you're going to let the cops get to him first? Do you know a better way to handle this? I'm through handling him with kid gloves. Come on. Thank you. 
Police, the girls are safe. But I've got to do something. ringing. How are we going to stay here until a police car checks on us? He must have got home before this. Will you shut your mouth? He'll be along. They always come home. That's his kid and her boyfriend. Well, good night. Uh, swell dance, huh? Well. Uh, swell dinner, too. Well. That your dad took us to. Oh, I'd forgotten about him. Lester, I've got to talk to someone. Well, you can always talk to me, Jenny. I'm so worried about the murder. Do you suspect Mr. Johnson? Well, he did play golf there Friday afternoon, and he acted awfully funny about that. And then the same afternoon, he lost the elk's tooth off his watch chain. Oh, that's only circumstantial evidence. But it's the way he's been acting. Yeah. Remember you told me about split personalities? Schizophrenics. Well, now, if you take a personality like Dad and expose him to a bad woman... Cream passion now. She gets her clutches on him while he's still split up, and then one day the two halves of him suddenly come together. He realizes what has happened. He hates himself for it. He thinks of Carol and me. He tells the vampire that he's going never to return. She threatens him with a gun. He struggles with her for the weapon. The gun goes off. The vampire is dead. Gee. Do you think this could have happened to Dad? Well... No. But he's in some kind of trouble. Well, it's been my experience that most situations are confused by subterfuge. Now, if your father and I could have a talk, we could straighten this whole thing out. Where is he? I don't know. Oh, that's too bad. Now that I'm familiar with this case, if your father and I could have a talk, have a meeting of minds, we can straighten this whole mess out. Lester, you're wonderful. Wow. Hello? Ginny. Oh, I'm glad you're home, darling. Oh, hello, Daddy. Where are you? 
Oh, well, I'm at the office, dear. I'm, I'm, I'm delayed a little. I'm trying to check up on some work. You're all right, aren't you? Yes, Daddy. When will you be home, though? It, well, is Carol home yet? No, I don't think so. Daddy, are you all right? Oh, of course I am, darling. I, I'm a little tired, that's all. I'll, I'll see you in the morning. Now, Tilly's there, and I want you to go right upstairs and go to bed. Will you do that? All right, Daddy. Good night, Daddy. I wonder if I could catch Lester and then... Lester! Lester! Tony, don't do it. I'm handling this. Wait here, Lefty. Oh, Virginia. Hi, Virginia. Remember me? Oh, Daddy's friend. That's right. Is your daddy at home? No, he isn't. He's at the office. But I don't want him. I want Lester. He's my boyfriend. Well, can I help? Well, did you see a hot rod pulling out of here? A low slung roaster with twin pipes? Is that Lester? Yes. Yes, sure I did. Come on, we'll catch him for you. Well, thank you very much. Make him leave that kid alone, Lester. Gee, this is wonderful of you. It must be fate the way you turned up. It's too late to be driving around. Boyle Street first, Lefty. But Lester isn't... We aren't going after Lester now. Virginia. It's going to be murder again. Stop, let me out. She's out of her mind. He's a murderer and he'll kill you too. I want to get out! What's wrong? Jenny went to bed and left the lights on again. That's not what I'm talking about. What's wrong with you? Nothing. Excuse me. Hello? Hello, is Mr. Johnson here? Uh, no, he isn't. Who's this? Brayden, out of police headquarters. You're his daughter, aren't you? Yes. Where is he? I don't know. Is anything the matter? Certainly. I will. Goodbye. Anything you can let me in on? I'm sorry I dragged you away so early. Why don't you go back, Mark? Without you? Carol, honey, you seem so far away from me. Please, Mark, I, I wish you'd go. Not until I know what this is all about. I'm all confused. You're trying to tell me you don't love me? No. Well, then what else matters? Mark, I, I want to break our engagement. Well, that doesn't make sense. Nothing makes any sense. People that you think you know and can trust, what? All at once you find you don't know them at all. You mean me? No, not you, Mark. It's... I... I just don't want to be engaged. Not now. You better take this before you ask me for it. Carol. Oh, please, Mark. Madison, 4506. That's right. Hello. Mr. Johnson? Yes, speaking. This is Inspector Martell. I guess you know I've been on your tail for some days now, Mr. Johnson. 
My orders are to keep you in sight and to talk to you at my discretion any time you want to talk. Now I've got you in sight okay, Mr. Johnson. I'm looking up at your office window from a phone booth on the street below. I'm using my discretion and talking to you because it's cold out here. Wouldn't you like to invite me up for a little chat? Yes, Inspector, I'd like to talk to you. All right, Mr. Johnson, I'll be right up. Goodbye. Come on. should have called you before. I wanted to do the right thing, but it was my family. When they threatened my two girls, I didn't know what to do. Where are those plates, Mr. Johnson? You're not the man that telephoned to me. The police don't know about those plates. Who are you? There are two of you. Oh, I know who you are. Sure you do. Let's have those plates, and fast. I haven't got them. Somebody else took them. I don't know who it was. Maybe this will help you remember. No, 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 don't do that. I haven't got them, I can't. Let's put them in the chair. All right, Johnson, where are they? I don't know. You're up against the golfer, Tony. And when you're up against the golfer, you gotta put a lot of shoulder into it. Give it a lot of follow through, like this. Go! Who? Ready to tell us? I haven't got anything to tell. He's got a daughter named Virginia. He had a daughter named Virginia. If you've done anything, maybe you'll swap the plates for your kid. I don't believe you. I don't believe you got her. yourself. Hello? Hello, Carol. Is Ginny there? Dad, where are you? Are you all right? Never mind that. Is Ginny there? I've got to know. Well, all right, hold on a minute. Ginny? Ginny? She isn't here. Her bed hasn't been slept in. Carol, Carol. How about it, Johnson? All right. All right, I'll tell you. I'll tell you when I see Virginia safe and sound. You'll tell me and now. I'll tell you when I see Virginia safe and sound. I made a deal with Johnson. Lefty's coming over to get the kid. Okay. Now you're getting smart. Spare a ride and use the child, huh? <laughs> Not bad, huh? <laughs> okay, okay. I'm sorry, boss. Should add it. Johnny, Ginny, are you all right? Don't tell him a thing, Daddy. Don't talk. Well, here she is. All right, Johnson. Give. Yes, yes, I, I, I will. 
Just as soon as you take Virginia to a safe place. You told me to bring her here. I know I wanted to see her. Where are those plates? I've got them, and I'll give them to you. Look, take her to Mark Bellman. As soon as Mark Bellman calls me on that phone, you I promise... You two sister. You think we're playing games? Oh, no, I'll, I, I'll get them for you. I just want the girl to... You haven't got them. Oh, yes, I have. I... Oh... All right, Johnson. I'm through talking. Help! Help! Well, I've swung one of these for years. If you move, so help me. All right, Mr. Johnson. You, you don't have to show me. Sit down, Virginia. You sit down. Yes, ma'am. Right over there. Down! Businessman captures counterfeiting gang. Benson murder solved. Late last night in a lonely office, Fred Johnson, local agent for agricultural machinery, stood off and captured a gang of desperate counterfeiters who had imprisoned him and kidnapped his youngest daughter, Virginia. Well, wow, good morning, children. Good morning, Daddy. Hold on, Mr. Johnson. I want a picture. Leader of the gang was identified as Tony Montague, who police revealed has confessed to the murder of Billy Benson, found last week near the boundaries of the country club. Hey, Mr. Johnson. Isn't Carol ready yet? Just a minute. I'll, I'll see Mark. She should be... Oh. <laughs> Hurry, Mark. I'll be right down. All right. Hurry up, honey. We've got to buy that lot this afternoon. All right, Mark. Goodbye, Dad. I'm going to take the day off. Goodbye, Dad. Take the week off. <laughs> I want a picture of you and Mr. Johnson together. All right. Come on, honey. Uh, Mr. Johnson, don't you think it would be better without that package? Oh, oh the package. <laughs> good fences make good neighbors. Hold it now. Hold it. 